Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Eric Willis, Executive Vice President here at CureWorks, and thank you for joining us today for our webinar on Briggs & Stratton, Why We Use Managed Services. I'm very excited today for this webinar. We're joined today by one of our customers, Barb Kufalk from Briggs & Stratton, to talk about how they've been using managed services from CureWorks for the past couple of years. Um, what we're going to do is first kick off with an overview of really what managed services is. It's an offering we've had for probably around three years now and has been slowly being adopted by many of our customers, both large and small. Um, but what I thought would make the most sense to do first would be to touch on really what are our different support levels at CureWorks. So um, for many of you that are on the line today, you're uh, using OnBase across your organization. Many of you that are on the line are, are system administrators that, that live and breathe on base on a daily basis. And many of you work with our customer care team, you know, calling folks and email with folks like Nate Anderson and Ben Quibello and Christina Ziegler. Um, but there are other options with inside of uh, the customer care team world. And what you're most used to is our standard support, uh, which is unlimited email support. We have a 24 hour business return time on that. We've got unlimited chat. Phone support though is a uh, pay as you need uh, scenario. We also have uh, customization support as pay as you needed, after hour support at that premium rate. Now, the other option that several customers have adopted over the years that's kind of a step between both standard and managed services is our premium support. So, um, the big difference here is that one, you have an improved SLA when it comes to email support um, from 24 hours down to four hours. The biggest thing though is you have unlimited phone support. So at any time you need to call in to the customer care team, you can just pick up that phone, call directly into the team, get routed to uh, one of the customer care team engineers and be able to start working on that issue. Um, there's also some additional uh, improved SLAs when it comes to chat support. Also, we do a little bit more of a triage when it comes to customization. So if you need some help troubleshooting APIs or other things of that nature, custom integrations, we're there to support you when it comes to that. We also, as part of that, do quarterly health checks. So we'll dial into your system, make sure everything's optimized and tuning to the right specifics. But then, uh, oh, and just uh, to touch on that, for those that are new to premium support or haven't heard about it, um, what it is, we just do a small little uptick on your um, annual maintenance. So if you take a look at it, the example here is if I've got a software system that's about 150,000 in software, your standard software maintenance and support on that would be $30,900 a year. Uh, to move to that premium support level, to get the unlimited phone support, to get the increased SLAs on email and chat, the initial triage for customization, uh, another big one there too that I didn't mention is the ability to have after hours uh, support at our standard rate versus paying a uh, premium or escalated rate with standard is for just 5% uh, of that software. So in this case, $7,500 a year, you get access to that unlimited uh, phone support and that premium support option from our customer care team. Um, so again, a great middle option there as you kind of evaluate your support needs is a great way to be able to budget for your support costs by moving to that premium level. And it's one of those things that we've started again to see adoption over the last couple of years. But the one that we're here to talk the most about today is our managed services offering. And this has really, again, been one that has been, we've seen some strong adoption. Even within this last year, we've had uh, four customers add managed services to their program um, this year. And really the key reason for that is that they're looking to take the time that they spend in on base and focus on areas that add the most value to their organization. So instead of spending time on just the care and feeding and health of their on base system, they're spending that time of their internal resources to develop new workflows, to develop new work view applications, to build out um, solutions for new departments in the organization to expand the depth and breadth of on base. Uh, throughout the um, deployment. So what managed services is, is again, you get some improved uh, SLA. So you get uh, one hour so, uh, email support. 
30 minute response time for unlimited phone. You get uh, one hour for chat. All of your customization support is covered, so we'll be able to help you out with any of your APIs or custom integrations. Um, still the same standard availability and after hours, but where we really get into the difference here with managed services is that we really start to act as your system administrator. So instead of, again, you know, think of yourself in that system administrator role, right? Instead of you having to deal with those help desk tickets coming in saying, oh, I, I'm locked out of OnBase, or um, I'm running into this bug or this issue, or I, I just need to get access to this scan queue, or I need this document came up and said this document's locked, what do I do? You know, those, those you know, requests that come in that really honestly can be annoying at times and take you off of the task that you're doing. Let's say your head's down and working on developing a new workflow solution for your AP department, but then a ticket comes in that's been escalated from a, a VP of HR saying, well, I need to get this new person added to on base, or I need to get this new scan queue created, I need to uh, troubleshoot this issue. A lot of times you've got to drop what you're doing on that workflow and move over to start handling that ticket. So what we really do is ask, act as that system administrator. And the best part about that is the cases are logged and resolved directly with, from our customer care team. And you'll hear that from Barb when uh, we talk a little bit later on how they interact with our customer care team and how we've integrated with their uh, support and ticketing system where your end users that need to open a support ticket can open it up just like they've always done, but those will feed directly to our customer care team. We'll open up a ticket then within our system and then be able to follow back up with your end users directly, allowing you to save time focusing again on those more higher value tasks as being an on-base expert in your organization. But besides just those um, you know, help desk tickets and other things of that nature, the big, one of the big roles of being a system administrator is really the care and feeding of your on-base system and making sure that it's optimized to meet the needs of your organization. So there's a lot of things on the slide there, but this is just a sampling of the daily, weekly, and monthly tasks that our team does to make sure that, op that on-base is optimized in your organization through our managed services program. So from a daily task perspective, obviously we'll be dealing with help desk requests. We'll also be making sure that um, every day we'll log in, make sure every client is operating uh, correctly. So we'll log into the thick client, Unity, web if you have it. Make sure that all the application pools are running. Make sure processing services are running. Monitor those import and export processes. Uh, if there's batches that haven't been auto committed, we'll commit those batches. Monitor document maintenance and monitor document locks and process locks and batch locks. Um, also deal, deal, deal with things like troubleshooting workflow timers or schedule, scheduler services. Um, those are just things we do on a daily basis. From a weekly task, we'll also do that user, user group maintenance, server maintenance, um, monitor that uh, event viewer. We'll also keep an eye on storage capacity and make sure you're not running into any issues from a storage standpoint. Uh, from the monthly perspective, we'll be helping monitor backups um, as we do on a daily basis as well. Um, also provide our monthly reporting, uh, potentially coordinate with your internal IT teams for any infrastructure changes that may need to take place. Uh, also make sure that on servers and workstations that we're ensuring all system requirements are met. So they make sure again, not just that the software is operating well, but the software is operating on hardware that's optimized for your environment and that you're getting the most out of on base on the hardware that it's sitting on. Um, again, so this hopefully gives you a taste of what managed services is. Um, we've really from, you know, you'll hear it again from Barb, but our other customers, a good example is um, a customer, customer of ours in the healthcare payer space. Um, they've built a large on-base team within their organization. They've got about eight to 10 people on that team. And what they kept getting hit with is all these requests coming in of on-base isn't running as fast as it could, or I've got to deal with this ticket coming in. And it was holding them back from starting to do innovative and creative things with on-base in their organization. And they came to us and said, well, you know, is there a better option than us dealing with all this? And that's where we presented them our managed services offering. And yes, they were in that system administrator role and that stuff they were dealing every, with every day. 
and hopefully you'll hear this from Barb as well, but one of the things that they got the most excited about from managed services is that they were able to hand off all the stuff that they really didn't want to deal with on a daily basis of managing on base and really, again, focus in on the creative, fun, and exciting stuff that people think about on base and get to do that on a daily basis. So with that, hopefully everyone has a good uh, working understanding of what managed services is, how it fits into our overall support structure, um, what our different levels are there. Um, but now I wanna really focus in on the reason why we're all here, and that's to, to talk to Briggs and Stratton and to Barb Kufalk. Um, real quick overview on Briggs and Stratton. Uh, long, long time uh, organization founded in 1908 in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So the world's largest producer of gasoline engines for outdoor power equipment. Uh, their products are designed, manufactured, marketed, and serviced in over 100 countries on six continents. Um, obviously, they're a long um, founded company. They've also been one of our longest customers. Um, Keurigs, uh, they've been a Keurigs customer since 1984, if not even a little bit before that. I had our accounting team try to go back through uh, all the records to see what we could find there. It looks like from what we could uncover, it was 1984, but maybe Barb knows uh, more than me. But I, I think Barb, and you can uh, address this here in a second, but I think uh, uh, that even dates back to when you started with, with uh, Briggs in 1984. Um, but as, as technology has evolved, so has our relationship with um, Briggs. I was talking with Bill Berger, our president and CEO, and, and he remembers even back when he was in high school, driving to Briggs, meeting with Barb, picking up uh, work to be filmed in microfilm, bringing it back to the office, or taking film to be backed up and, and refilmed. So, uh, you know, they were one of our microfilm and microfiche customers. But then again, as we moved to modern technology, Barb and her team evolved with us. And uh, they implemented OnBase and integrated it with SAP and um, were our first managed services customer. Um, they've got a great OnBase system there. If you take a look at it here, just a a quick snapshot of what their environment looks like. They've got a large user base, modules like application enabler, doc comp, uh, document imaging, um, integration with DocuSign, all the integrations with SAP, mobile access across multiple platforms, records management, reporting dashboards, uh, Unity, web, workflow approval management. So Barb really has a, a, a large breadth of on base across the organization and our team's done a great job at supporting uh, the growth of on base uh, at Briggs. So uh, with that, I, uh, I welcome uh, Barb Kufalk uh, to the, uh, the call. And Barb, if you just want to just give yourself a, a quick uh, introduction to those on the phone. Sure. Um, yep, uh, I'm feeling pretty old, Eric. I, I did start <laughs> here in 1984. Um, and actually, we've been working with security microimaging, like you said, for the microfilm. But we also, if you guys remember the old Kodak car microfilm system, and then we moved into cold, and then we moved into film, and now we're into imaging. So security microimaging has always supported all of our hardware needs for scanners and everything. Um, and then, you know, since we started on base back in 2010, um, we started that with um, KiriWorks, security microimaging. Um, and we've kind of grown from there. We, we try and add a couple modules, new projects, new things um, every year. So ahead. I've been in, go ahead. No, 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 go, go ahead, Barb. Yeah. Yep. So I've had different roles. I've always been involved in records management. So that is my key focus at Briggs and Stratton. I, um, I've been in the IT department for 17 years and about a year and a half ago, moved over to the legal department. So we're very compliance and records management focused, not so much system focused. So about five years ago, the IT department, we got new management in our IT department and they implemented a new strategy and they wanted to outsource all of our system support um, of most of our large systems, so our SAP support, our team center support, Ceridian, you know, on base, all of our large enterprise systems um, went to an outsource model 
And the goal of that model was to allow our employees, as you pointed out, Eric, to focus on working with the business on those higher value initiatives. And the other thing is the records management group, as part of legal, our focus isn't on IT technology and keeping up with the latest and greatest. That's not our focus, and not our real focus is definitely not system support. So we're the on-base business champions. That's kind of another um, strategy that IT is, is developing here at Briggs is to actually have the business be the champions and the owners of our systems, like engineering owns our team center system team center system and records legal owns on base obviously everybody owns SAP um, but that's kind of our focus is so that you have the the business owns it they understand it we know the business reasons behind why we're using those applications so we're still the business champions of on base obviously we know how it works and we do our own config here and there um, but really not focused on support and then the third thing is that we have a small group um, in records management in the on that legal department and we have a limited budget you know for the on-base support so with managed services we don't have to worry about the turnover you know if i lose a person and that's my one on-base support person that i'm really in a fix because you know to get someone new and, and hire them and bring them up to speed would take several months and also the training expenses. Um, not to say we don't invest in training, and invest in our staff. We go to the um, the live community live conference has gone every year, and we do attend training. I'm a certified sysadmin, and the other two people who work with me have attended the training and have not been certified, but that was um, an election on their part. So we do still attend training, but we're not. You know, we upgraded a year and a half ago to on base 15 from 11. So we don't have to go and learn all 15. And in March of 2018, we're going to upgrade to on base 17. So we don't have to stay, you know, up to date with all of the training every time we do an upgrade. We know we've got experts that know on base 17 and all those modules we have. So it actually helps on training and the focus in, in that way too. Yeah, no, that, that's a great point, Barb. And maybe it's a point I've probably never even thought of before, I, but it's a pain I've heard from a lot of customers, right? Is, is that, especially when you have a small team and you have maybe one or two, if you're lucky people that focus on an on-base and when you lose that one on-base expert, whether they move to another company, they move to a uh, another organization moving on to do an on base or, or what have you is that you're then just lost and you don't have that expertise and anything to fall back to. And I know we've had customers in the past that have, you know, kind of run to us say, oh my gosh, our system administrator just left. I really don't even know what's going on in on base. They were our expert. They knew everything going on, not just the skills left with them, but the knowledge was lost as well of just kind of what happened with the system, why things were done, you know, what server names are tied to which applications, et cetera. So you know, that's a, that training element and that, that knowledge source element is, is a key piece, I think, to why looking at managed services. That, that was a great idea there, Barb. Thanks. Um, now you, you kind of touched on a little bit of this already, um, but you know, from a, a managed services perspective, you, you talked about being on-base champions and the and the um, the business side really owning um, the application. But you know, really, what has managed services freed up you or others on your team to be able to do by allowing our managed services team to to run with some of those uh, support tasks? So, well, obviously, the biggest thing is we can focus on our our legal, our records management, our information governance programs. Um, that is our key focus, what we really want to attend to. Um, and the other thing is we get to do the fun on base stuff. You know, we get to do the programs and the projects and we get to work with the business and actually, you know, the continuous improvement that we get to see. And you have that satisfaction of finishing those projects. And we've got, oh, I don't know, at least three in flight projects for you and two that we're um, looking at 
um, very soon. So we're we're constantly looking at that, the continuous improvement, and we can even use your team as our project managers because we don't have project managers per se at Briggs that are project or system specific. So you guys help us out a lot with the um, the business analysis and the project management pieces too, because otherwise that always fell on our department. We had to do everything. We were the project managers, we were the budget people, we were the analysts, we were the configurers, we were the support. We just couldn't do that. So, and like you said, I mean, that's the kind of drudgery kind of part of it. And so now we can turn most of that over to you, over to Kiri Works, and, and have them do that. Um, one of the real things that helped us a lot um, is when we converted. We were we were on FileNet for several years and we, we moved over to OnBase and CurieWorks actually helped run that whole conversion. So we had, I don't know, it was probably close to 200 different document types that we had to convert over from FileNet to OnBase. And CurieWorks worked with us every step of the way on that, you know, with our different partners and, and getting that going. So really have an intimate um, knowledge of our system of every document type and every dip and everything we've done so that really frees us up to not have to know every single little tiny detail about our system because you guys know most of it too yeah no that's a good point too Barb because one of the things that we do when we kick off a new managed services uh, contract or, or opportunity is that Greg Wheeler and his team go out and do a full technical assessment and, and document completely your OnBase environment as, along with the other areas that OnBase touches. So, and, and a lot of times we find out, because you know, we always ask the question, well, you know, can you share some of that documentation with us ahead of time? And in almost every case is, oh, we don't have that, or that's just in our heads. So one of those nice advantages is that not only do we then get that knowledge, but then it's documented, it's transferable. So when we bring on new people or you need to educate someone new in your organization about it, we have all of that information documented about your on-base system, about your on-base environment, about the infrastructure, et cetera. So now I, I think uh, that that knowledge that, that gets shared is key. But I think again, the one of the, I think, uh, Skepti skeptical con uh, comments about managed services from system administrators as well, is this just taking my job away? And I think you hit the nail on the head there, Barb, is that no, it's actually freeing you up to do the things that you wanna do, right? It's it's allowing you to build that new workflow. It's allowing you to build that, do that new program, allow you to roll it out to a new department and not just sit there fixing problems or maintaining the system and actually do the creative fun stuff that you get excited about. And to your point, you get the, the validation to actually see it through quicker because you can actually focus on it. Um, you know, as I talked about earlier when I kicked off, or was it when I was describing the, uh, how, the uh, premises of how managed services work, I talked about how uh, people just automatically can send their support tickets directly into our team, how we integrate with customers, ticketing systems, et cetera. Can you just describe or walk through kind of how the interaction works with CureWorks and the managed services team and kind of one, how your end users work with us and then two, any kind of interactions you've had with a member that you want to share? Sure. So CureWorks has, an account in our service now incident system. So people can call the help desk, they don't call us, they can, but they don't necessarily always call us because people don't know that the records management could support on base. So they'll call the, the help desk and the help desk will put the ticket in and they'll assign it to the on base support group of which CureWorks Managed Services is a member of that group. So as soon as an incident goes in, they're notified of what's going on. And if it's something that they deal with, we, we still do our own user setup and our user profiles because we know our, our business users and, and our document types and who should get what better than anybody. But if it's not one of those things, it just gets assigned right to managed services. You log it in, in or CareWorks logs it in their system and they take care of it. A lot of times we don't ever hear from the business user. The greatest thing is I'll see an incident come through and I'll see that incident is resolved. So there's no interaction from us unless, you know, sometimes we'll put the incidents in too. 
Um, but even dealing with our international groups in Australia and China, um, Switzerland, the on-base managed services, the CureX managed services group just takes those calls right. We never have to get involved in those. Um, the other thing is, you know, my group will email or call, depending on the priority or what it is we're looking for, um, to the, the managed services group. And we hear back right away. You know, if I call, someone always answers the phone. Um, never been told, hey, I can't work on this now. I'll have to get back to you. So we have very, very good response. Um, I looked at two recent examples, probably in the last week or so, um, that are kind of unusual for what typically happens with our on-base system. So, you know, like a lot of companies, we have um, endpoint protection and you're worried about malware and viruses and all that kind of stuff and IT security and so one of our other partners because we deal with a lot of different partners and, and we have an infrastructure partner and they had put in a new endpoint monitoring system on our on-base system and so we're getting reports it's, it's month end close and we're getting reports from our compatible department that on-base is working slowly you know so called KiriWorks right away they were moded into the server said hey you got really high CPU usage drilled down a little further found out what the underlying issue was for me told me exactly what application was causing the problem so then we opened up another call with our, our infrastructure partner and let them know and side note is the infrastructure partner who monitors our system should have known of that before CurioWorks even went in and looked at it and said, hey, you guys got an issue with this. So we notified the third party. They went in, you know, tweaked the application, resolved it. But CurioWorks actually continued monitoring our system for several days after that just to make sure that it wasn't going to reoccur and that our systems were actually running normally. So kind of a couple day long instance, but to me it was a phone call you know, and a little bit of coordination with that third party. Um, and then knowing that CurioWorks was gonna monitor my system for me and let me know if anything else got out of whack right away. <clears throat> and the other example was, again, security. Um, sent me an email and said, hey, we got a file, it's tagged by our endpoint protection solution, and it's monitoring the files and the hash values on the servers, and one of, your files on the Ambay system has been tagged as a malicious file and we need to verify it. And it's a DLL. You know, <laughs> how many DLLs are there? And it's like, how am I gonna know if that's a legitimate DLL? So I called Christina, you know, she said, well, let me, let me look into it. Got back to me and said, yep, it's legitimate DLL, no worries. So, I mean, that's one of those things that's like, oh, how would, you know, even I would even know that obviously had to call you guys anyway, but it was just great to not have to go, oh, man, what am I going to do with this app? <laughs> so, you know, immediate response, good solution, kind of unusual kind of things that, that we'll kind of toss into managed services and go, hey, can you help us with this? You know, and, and then some of the, just the regular, you know, why is this a still in an exception queue or, or why is this happening? Or, hey, you know, I'm new to this module and I'm trying to do this. Can you explain to me how this is supposed to happen? So we actually do a little bit of, you know, can you tell me how this is supposed to work? Um, a lot of times the, the managed services group will say, hey, you know, yeah, it's in this MRG, it's this page, go scope it out. Um, and then we'll keep track of all of that everything's documented in email going back and forth. So we can certainly keep all of that stuff for future reference if we want to. So a lot of interaction. I think we call you guys every day. One of either my team or the business or someone, we're with you guys every single day. If not more yeah, day. yeah, and I think that's one of the, the key success points of any of these managed services programs that we've done is it is building that one you're building that rapport with you know your team so you guys know and how to work with us but then i do think it is that that ease of interaction with the end user community and i think again barbie hit the nail on the head where you guys get that satisfaction of you see incident come in you see incident get closed and you never had to deal 
with anything on it. And I think that's one to me, the biggest benefits of this is that again, going back to your, one of your earlier points is that it just frees you up to not have to worry about that, especially in an organization like yours, where you've got users throughout the world that, you know, are going to have different requests at different times and may not have a lot of experience with OnBase. And it's great to be able to just funnel that all through our team. So, you know, great, great feedback there. Um, I think you kind of hit uh, on, a, on a couple of these uh, related to this question. So I don't know if you have any others to share, but any other uh, key benefits you feel that uh, Briggs has really experienced since moving to managed services? So there's a, a couple. So, you know, I said we have, we're working with projects with, with CurieWorks as well as our, our, our support. So one of the nice things is when we're working with the, the project team, is when they're done and the project is over, it just naturally seamlessly transfers over to managed services. We don't have to bring them up to speed. They already know what's going on. You know, they're, they know what the project is. They know what new modules we brought on. So anything they need to know about what our new project was, what we're doing to support it, the other side, the professional services side, can bring them up to speed on that. Um, the other thing that's that's nice is you know those Highland technical bulletins you get and you read them and you go man um, does that apply to me does it not what's the impact so what CurieWorks will do for us is they'll actually give me an analysis of that service bulletin and tell me yes or that technical bulletin we have service bulletins you have technical bulletins so um, what does this apply to me? Do I have those instances in my system or do I not? Just don't even worry about it, Barb, because you don't have any of that. You know, so number one, tell me, do we have any? Does it apply to us? And then what's the risk? You know, is this going to maybe happen? Yes, it's going to happen. And then what's the, the remediation? What do they recommend that we do? You know, whether it be, you know, upgrading to a new patch or, you know, change some of our configuration. And actually, if it's changed configuration, managed services will take care of that for me too. So that's one of the other things is I'm not just getting this technical bulletin in my lap saying, hey, there's a technical bullet and someone's helping to explain to me and, and actually doing the analysis to tell me, yeah, it does apply to you or it doesn't. Um, and then I, I think the, the faster resolution for our business customers, you know, like you said, they don't have to wait until we have time to deal with it. So managed services will actually jump on those a lot quicker than what we do. So that's that's the the other benefits. So yeah, no, I think and I think Barb again. I think one of the points that um, I think can get lost sometimes is that first one you brought up is that seamless transition from the project team to the support team. I know there's organizations that have time in, you know, at times have always looked at, well, you know, if we go with this same approach that, you know, you went through as an, as a IT organization of moving all of your support to third party organizations and reducing the size of your IT team is, you know, we've heard from other customers, well, we're thinking about maybe moving this to a centralized organization that is going to handle all of our support. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head again there of um, what that problem can be then, right? Is because then that support team doesn't know what's going on on a daily basis or with new projects. And then there's that big handoff from a project being communicated or being finished to communicate it to a support team that may not really even know much about OnBase. So I think having those integrated into one organization where you've got your project team doing your project work, sitting right by your uh, managed services team to be able to share from project managers, hey guys, yep, we just finished this upgrade, we just finished this project, you now need to be able to support this because this is now in their environment and to have those two teams working together, shaking hands is a lot easier than those being in uh, different organizations in different realms. So again, a, gr a great point there, Barb. Um, you know, in I think this is a great one for you to touch on because you've been doing this longer than any of our other customers. So, um, you know, we, as I said earlier, we've had four customers add managed services this year. So it's definitely a trend uh, that we're starting to see from organizations. So what type of advice would you give to some other on-base uh, customers out there considering moving to managed services? So one of the first things is so, 
you know, you're managing your on-base system today and think about what pieces you want to cut off and have carry work support. You know, what, what are those clear lines? You'll do this, we'll do this. You know, if you create a RACI chart for incidents, events, outages, you know, who's, who's managing what, who's doing what um, types of work, what are you going to monitor, you know, do you have anything special, customized, that you need CareWorks to be aware of. So one of the first things I think we did was to create that RACI chart. Um, document all your contacts, your communication channels. You know, we have a lot of partners. So, you know, who calls who when this happens? Um, again, you could do that in your RACI chart too. You know, when are your maintenance windows? Um, what's your change management process? So make sure you pull all that documentation out and share it with CareWorks. Um, one of the, the simple things is have multiple logins for your managed services team because you might have multiple people working on your systems at the same time and they're going to need multiple logins. So I think we have four or so, uh, maybe more for different um, employees at CureWorks that they can log in to work on our systems. Um, introduce your managed services team to internal IT so they know who they are, they know what their roles are, you know, introduce them to the other partners. And I'm not saying introduce in person, you know, just do an introductory kind of email, memo, whatever. Um, and definitely with the help desk, you know, so the help desk knows this is who CureWorks is and this is who the players are and this is what they manage. So get all of that information so everybody knows who's on first, second, and third. And, and if something happens, you know, who does what. Um, and even then to help help direct the help desk, you know, so they ask a good questions when someone calls in. You know, I always love the help desk call that says on base isn't working. Um, so help the help desk um, say this is what what we need to know. You know, who's the user? What were they doing? Can you provide a screenshot? Were there any errors? So. It helps everybody, and that's that's true across you know any help desk. But um, for sure, you can create those knowledge articles um, to help out the help desk, so they know who to go to. Um, I know Eric, you mentioned the up-to-date architectural diagram, and CareWorks does maintain ours. We just had ours updated not too long ago, um, and what those application interfaces are. Um, where are those links and, and what are the other things that you're doing with, you know, like for us it's SAP and SharePoint. Um, and then clear expectations, you know, so you know what you're doing, they're going to know what they're doing and how you're going to bridge the gaps in between. So just some of the things that we've dealt with in, I think it's been five years or so we've been with managed services, so a couple lessons learned there. Yeah, that's that's great. And um, I'll, I'll move on to my last question. Um, but if, if anyone would like to submit any questions for Barb, I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but feel free to uh, enter in any questions in the right hand um, uh, panel of the GoToWebinar. You should be able to go ahead and submit any questions there. And uh, as we wrap up with our last question to Barb, um, you know, you've hit on a lot of a lot of great things, so this might be a tough one to answer. But um, what's really been the best aspect, would you say, of working with CureWorks to to manage your on-base environment? I think it's the expertise and the experience. You know, like I said, when we do an upgrade, I don't have to worry about knowing what version we're on because I know CureWorks is going to know it, or I don't have to worry when I bring in a new module. You know, how does this work and is it, is it going to work and are we going to use it right? Um, there's a lot of times I've reached out to CareWorks and said, this is what I'm trying to do. What's the best solution or the best module, you know, or the best thing I can do to make this happen that I want it to happen. So just having that expertise and that experience at our fingertips, phone call away, email, um, whatever it is we need to know. Um, and the other thing I think is, you know, just not having to worry about those basics, the services running, the import processes, you know, the uncommitted batches, the cleanup, the locks, you know, putting in new licenses, just space, all those kind of things, not even having to worry about that at all. Yeah, no, I, I, I think, uh, 
I think when you talk about expertise, that's a, a key thing. I think it's one of the things that, that we pride ourselves on as, as an organization. I know Greg and his team, you know, his, his one of his main things on his team is training, training, training. And anytime there's downtime on his team, when they're not taking a call or an email or following up on anything, they're continually focused on uh, getting additional training, using premium subscription from Highland, going to TechQuest, going to other events, uh, to really bring that expertise to the table. Um, to, and again, not to say that, as you said earlier, Barb, that you guys don't have to get trained, but it augments what you guys are doing. And again, gives you that security that uh, your calls from your end users are coming into a team that, that knows what they're talking about and, and have the latest and greatest uh, knowledge of OnBases too. Um, you know, there's a lot of times when folks come to the table with OnBase knowledge, but it might be now that Highland's been around since 1991, there's a lot of outdated on-base knowledge out there. And it's tough at times to trust the on-base consultants or other folks that are out there in the field um, on how up-to-date and knowledgeable they actually are on on-base. So I think, uh, again, to your point, one of the, the key aspects of our managed services offerings is you're getting uh, direct access to those top, top resources. Um, let me check here real quick to see if we have uh, any questions. And um, one of them that came in is, Barb, it sounds like you've had a great experience, but there had to have been some challenges. Um, are there any things that you faced during doing this managed services program that you would have changed? So kind of back to lessons learned, um, it is another partner that needs to be brought into the mix. So there are some challenges there. So you really need to give some thought about, you know, I have an infrastructure team, I have a database team, I have, you know, on base team, my CurieWorks team. So um, really having that laid out ahead of time, and we didn't necessarily know all of that and I know CurieWorks didn't either because we were their first managed services customer so really kind of giving more thought to you know okay change management who's going to do cab and who's going to do you know all the different parts and pieces of, of working something through the infrastructure would have given more thought to that <clears throat> um, another thing is so you know, CureWorks isn't always going to have access to all of our production systems that we interface with. You know, we're not going to give CureWorks access to all of our SAP production data. So um, kind of think about how you're going to work that out and, and who's going to be the players on the, the internal side that's going to manage that because there's really no way around that, at least internally to Briggs and Stratton. Um, and then, you know, CureWorks is close, maybe a 20 minute drive away, but still everything is usually remote, you know, so TeamViewer or WebEx or phone calls or screenshots, emails, um, and there's really nothing that I know we can do about that. We have actually brought CureWorks on site um, for several weeks at a time if we're doing a project or like during that conversion. Um, so some of those things, too, um, can be a little inconvenient, but it's just the nature of the game. Perfect. I've got another one, Barb, that came in. Um, this one's actually probably a little bit more uh, towards me um, and CureWorks, but the question is, um, let's say you've got a organization where they've developed a number of their own internal workflows or dips or scan queues or work view applications. Um, well, one, I'll, I'll address that. So first, if we, when we bring on a new managed services uh, customer, as I shared, we do it a full technical assessment of their on-base environment. So uh, we actually go on site and spend time with the system administrators or other folks in IT, do a complete walkthrough of their on-base system, walk through all the workflows, understand how the different timers work, how the different integrations work or web services work or anything that's, um, especially when it's beyond just standard point and click configuration. 
um, of a workflow. We really make sure that's all documented as part of that um, assessment up front to ensure we really understand uh, the full depth and breadth of your on-base environment. So to answer that part of the question, you know, we expect that to happen in every case where we're coming into a situation where we're going to be managing workflows that we weren't, that our project team didn't initially create. The second part of the question was, well, how do you handle if we've got an unexperienced on-base administrator that goes in and builds a workflow, puts it in production, and the whole thing blows up? Um, is in summary of what the question is. So in that, in that, to that end, we're there to support you as well. Now, from a managed services perspective, we're not going to go in and rewrite a workflow or rebuild a workflow, but we'll one, at least point you in the right direction to fix the problem with the workflow that you have. Um, if it's so out of bounds that it just makes sense to do a project, then we're probably going to suggest that as the route to say, hey guys, you really messed this thing up. The right thing to do is just to blow it up and start from scratch with a new project, and we'll then engage our services team on that. But even if it is a case where, hey, we've put it in and we're running into these issues, then our managed services team can jump in and help try to resolve those. And, and that actually happened fairly recently where a customer of ours on managed services had a system administrator who uh, put in a work view application, moved it from test to production, and there were some issues by moving it from test to production that caused some issues. They engaged us, we were able to back it out of production, figure out the problems, make the changes and move it back into production. And that was all covered as part of their managed services um, contract. So again, there's gonna be a little gray there on that of, of, of how bad the problem is and, and whether or not it's something that can just be handled with support or if we really need to engage our services team. But at a minimum, it's going to start with managed services to see if they can resolve it. Let me check again real quick to see if any other questions came in. Um, looks like the, those were the, the last, the, the two questions we received. Um, Barb, I just want to thank you very much for your time today. I think uh, this was very enlightening and great for you to share your uh, experience over the last uh, four or five years of, of using managed services and um, Thanks for being a, a customer and partnering with us for the last 33 years while you've been at, at Briggs. And uh, um, again, thanks for the time and uh, the attention and look forward to our continued partnership. You're certainly welcome. Thanks, guys. And thanks to everyone who uh, joined us today. And uh, if we don't talk to you soon, have a great uh, Thanksgiving next week. And uh, cheers to you all. Bye. Bye-bye.